Hi guys. It is a dark and stormy, gray, depressing Sunday morning. That would be January 16th, 2022. Sunday morning, coming down here in the uh, Point Lonesome Swamp here in the Oasis of Freedom on this gloomy, stormy, just uh, blah winter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. So since it is Sunday, it is time for our weekly doomsday sermon. And strangely enough, uh, <laughs> I would like to thank my longtime buddy who for some reason has been sticking with me through the years. We're gonna call him Brother E.P. from B.C. E.P. from B.C. has probably sent me 500 uh, links uh, over the years, and I have managed to ignore every one of them until now, and uh, his tenacity has paid off, and uh, so thank you, brother E.P. from B.C., and, you know, as I say, we are, I'm beginning to push the envelope a little bit uh, here at Collapse Chronicles. I feel like that this channel has just, is starting just to become one more, just one more dead end in the uh, echo chamber of the Doomosphere. So we're going to get a little bit edgier on this channel in 2022. And we're going to start right here about how, you know, looking at, at how collapse is going to, what it's going to look like, at least in the beginning, for a more and more of us, as more and more of us are uh, just beaten down by everything from the mainstream media news to uh, the corporate takeover of this planet, to the, what is it, the social cohesion erosion, to all of those young, beautiful people, influencers on social media. It's all going to start taking its toll more than ever. And so we're going to uh, talk about depression, uh, isolation, and loneliness today because EP, <clears throat> he has found what I honestly believe this is the single most spot on, gut punch, brutally honest description of what it feels like to be uh, lonely and depressed as the whole world goes to hell in a handbasket. And uh, we're actually going to go back to the last day of 2021, to New Year's Eve of 2021, where this fellow I have never heard of, never heard of this fellow uh, calling himself, he has an avatar of a chimpanzee, calling himself Chad C. Mulligan, and this was what his uh, website is called Hip Crime, not Hip Camp, Hip Crime, and Chad C. Mulligan pulls no punches on New Year's Eve. Uh, I can imagine Chad sitting alone somewhere uh, in, it's in some place like the Point Lonesome Swamp on one of the most brutal nights of the year to be alone, which would be New Year's Eve. And we're going uh, to let Chad C. Mulligan take over from here in his New Year's Reflections 2021 on the logic and feasibility of giving up. Yes, the logic and feasibility of giving up. <clears throat> Take it away, Chad. <clears throat> it's the end of the year, 
and I am feeling a bit philosophical, so you may want to skip this post seriously. And this is no joke, guys. You seriously may want to consider uh, shutting, shutting this uh, collapse down right now and going back to your cute cat videos. This is, this is brutal uh, for, for anybody uh, who has, for those of you who have never been depressed or lonely or whatever, this will sound like <clears throat> so much probably over dramatic gobbledygook, but for those of you listening to this who have been where Chad has been, uh, you will know exactly what this man has, is getting ready to, to say to you and to anybody <coughs> who does, does not know what depression feels like, you are getting ready to get a lesson. <coughs> and as I get this burr out of my throat. All right. But maybe someone out there is in a similar place and feeling the same way I do. I can't do anything about that, and I don't have any answers. I wish I did. I just want to put some thoughts down on the predicament of life we find ourselves in. I have been up front over the years about the fact that I don't really want to be here. Be here, I mean. Basically, this place of existence. Now, I don't feel any particular imperative to do something about it right this very minute. But the way I've heard it described by others, and I concur, is that if I had the option of an off switch where I could literally just flip it and not be around anymore, I would certainly do so without a moment's hesitation. Another way of putting that is that the only reason I am alive is literally because I happen to not be dead and no other reason. It's not by choice, really. It's just kind of the default option. A lot of times I describe myself as dead inside. That is certainly how it feels, like an automaton or a zombie. I may look the same as everyone else on the outside, but I am empty on the inside, a hollow shell going through the motions day in and day out while feeling nothing. Another way I describe it is like sitting through the world's worst movie. Imagine sitting in the theater watching the most god-awful dreck you can possibly imagine. Would you stay or would you get up and leave? And at what point would you begin eyeing up the exits? What about a job you could not stand? One that you dread every time you have to go into work. Would you quit? Would you walk away? Or would you grit your teeth and stick it out no matter what? Now, what if that wasn't just eight hours a day? <clears throat> eight hours of your day, five days a week, but every waking moment. The thing is, you can always quit and get another job. There is no way to quit and get another life. There is only one way to walk away from that. I think there's a big group of people out there who are not actively suicidal, but do not like their lives. You're not 
alone. I love the irony uh, of you're not alone. <clears throat> Everywhere I look, it seems like people are self-medicating. The popular options for self-medication seem to be pets, seem to be little dogs. The popular options for self-medication seem to be pets, computer games, and religion. Sometimes people throw themselves into hobbies or they take enough pleasure in the mall things to make up for the big things that are crap. I honestly do not know if that was a Freudian typo or not. That was either a Freudian slip typo or, or, one of, or the best line in this essay. I don't know if he meant to say small things, but I absolutely love it, and I'm hoping it was on purpose. Or they take enough pleasure in the mall things to make up for the big things that are crap. I wished those things worked for me. I really do. But no matter how hard I try, my body rejects the mental anesthesia that seems to numb the pain for others. Are you mental anesthesia, little dog? This is my little bundle of mental anesthesia self-medication. For those of you who enjoy living and cannot imagine what any of this feels like, I say, good for you. I envy you, and I wish you the best. Everyone should feel like you. And fortunately, it appears that most people do. However, when I contemplate my own death, I don't feel fear. I feel relief, like a burden being lifted off my shoulders, like finally paying off a massive debt or getting out of an abusive relationship. It makes it easier to go on knowing that at least that option is out there. <clears throat> When you're, I, I honestly don't know how old Chad is. My guess is he's probably around my age. I'm 62. I feel like for some reason that this man is probably around my age. <clears throat> when you're young, you feel like life is full of possibilities. Like most young people, I had a lot of hopes and dreams. I wanted to be financially successful. Not rich, mind you, but at least not constantly worried about money. I wanted to fall in love at least once. I wanted to go to exotic places and meet interesting people. I wanted to at least be thankful for being alive and grateful for the opportunity of living an opportunity that very few get to experience. Like petals from a dying rose, one by one, those dreams fell away, lying brown and shriveled on the floor. All of us have a narrow window in which to achieve those things, and once it has passed, it is gone forever. That's simply the way life works. Maturing is a process of slowly giving up your dreams. With every path taken, others become closed off to you forever. Finally, there is only one arrow left on the signpost of life pointing you in a direction that you never wanted to go towards, a destination you never truly wanted to arrive at. And so life becomes effectively a death march, 
trudging slowly, silently forward toward the end, red, resigned to your fate. With youth, you at least have the notion that at some point, things will get better to keep you going. But at some point, you realize that there is more sand in the bottom of the hourglass than the top. You look in the mirror and see someone you do not recognize staring back at you, waistline expanding, hairline receding, less attractive and less desirable as an employer, I'm sorry, as an employee or lover with each passing year from this point forward. It is all sand in the bottom of the hourglass. And then you realize that you are not going, I'm sorry, I, <laughs> that, that was a Freudian slip. And then you realize that you are going to be spending the rest of your life alone. Your body slowly decaying and falling apart without any financial security and you don't see much appeal in that sort of a future or any good options left either professionally or personally. You simply cannot lie to that person in the mirror anymore. At some point, you have to be honest with yourself and realize that no, things are not going to get better and that your best days are behind you. By the way, uh, some of you might realize I am reading this. Uh, I am sitting in the room where uh, the, the person uh, who used to be in this room put a gun to her head and blew her brains out in this very room three months ago. <clears throat> Just a, this is her bedroom behind me. Okay. Where were we? As the wind whips, and that was the trash can blowing over, you just heard. <clears throat> anyway, back to Chad. You are never going to find that special someone. You will never come home to someone who loves you or experience what that feels like that wonderful career you imagined, you will never materialize. You are not going to climb the professional ladder. Financial security is out of reach and you will probably have to work until you die. You will never lie on that boat or sunny beach. No one will cry at your funeral or even know who you were. No one will know or care about all those hopes and dreams that little boy had so long ago when life seemed full of endless possibilities. Life is a parabola whose vertex can only be known in retrospect. Even when you know you have passed it, <clears throat> hopefully you have an ample store of good memories on the positive side of the line of symmetry to see you through as you begin your descent back toward the origin. Animal models of depression are fascinating. What they do is give animals a hopeless task like swimming until they just finally give up and resign themselves to drowning. They just can't go on anymore. All of us reach that point, some of us sooner than others. 
It feels like you are surrounded everywhere by predators and you are the prey, especially in the present day United States. Every industry is actively trying to rip you off from healthcare to education to finance to the government, corporations, car salesmen, not to mention the actual scammers online and off. No one is on your side except maybe your family if you're lucky. But for those of us without any family or friends, without even one single person to call on in an emergency or any safe place to fall, we truly are on our own in an unforgiving, dog-eat-dog -dog world where your life means nothing except as a revenue stream for someone higher up in the food chain. <clears throat> a life constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop is exhausting. At some point, you get tired of constantly running from the wolves and you just want to lie down and rest, rest for a long, long time. You no longer care if you get eaten anymore. In fact, it is a relief. Now, I am fortunate in the sense that I don't have to worry about hurting anyone if I do decide to go. Like uh, our friend over here on this couch 12 feet from me. <clears throat> Not many people <clears throat> are in that position. They will indeed hurt people and sometimes forever. For anyone with people they care about in their life, please, please, please put the thought out of your head. Living for others, as bad as that may be, is a worthwhile endeavor until the choice is made for you in the end, however long that may be. <clears throat> in the end, I have no one to blame but myself. And I don't blame anyone but myself. After all, people with far more disadvantages than me have gone on to live happy, fulfilling lives surrounded by people who love and care about them it brings my own failure into even sharper relief. We are the minority, but we're here. We are the shelter animals that did not get adopted for whatever reason. I love heartwarming stories of pets finding their forever homes. Yes. I'm a real sucker for them. I cannot get enough. For anyone who does not realize this, Sancho Panza was a rescue dog. Sancho and his brother were abandoned on the roadside to die on Christmas morning before he found me in the dog pound. Anyway, but for every rescue animal, that finds his forever home most never do. Their future consists of being led into a cold, dark, empty room that they will never come out of. They are probably scared and alone when it happens. <clears throat> Maybe you were too old. Maybe you were too ugly. Maybe too many abusive owners have ruined your chance at a good home. You don't understand what's going on or why. You had so much love to give 
if only you had the chance, but you will never get that chance. Those are the animals that I feel for. Those are the animals that I think about often. I shed a tear for them every so often. At least it's something, a way to remember. <clears throat> that is just the reality for some of us in this world. We were late bloomers. We did not live up to our potential. We were left on the shelf. We are always on the outside looking in. <clears throat> Some of us just are not cut out for this world. Parents, genes, upbringing, fate, luck, or what have you. As I always say, you cannot have big, big winners without also having big, big losers. That is just how it is. I don't know whether the love that those animals deserved but never got is out there waiting for them on the other side of the rainbow bridge. I really, really hope so. I don't know if there is a rainbow bridge for people. I doubt it. Religion talks a lot about the dead, but it's really for the living. Nothing I have seen in my life has convinced me that there is anything beyond this reality. But I do know that at the very least, nothing will hurt anymore. And maybe that enough. Thank you, Chad C. Mulligan, for those fine New Year's reflections uh, in 2021. And uh, anyway, guys, there you have it. And uh, I don't know how true that rang for uh, for some of you, but now that you're ready to slit your wrist, get out there and uh, head out there and enjoy it while you still can. Uh, and in all seriousness, guys, uh, anybody who is depressed and alone in life who does not rescue uh, a little dog or cat or bunny rabbit or whatever I just don't get it uh, I, I it sounds like Chad does not own a a pet but uh, if you if, if you do not own a pet and you are alone in life uh, that's really my only piece of advice guys uh, my little emotional support animal I guess the uh, the woman who blew her brains out here uh, 12 feet from where I am sitting uh, her emotional support animal was probably lying on the couch with her is my guess but at least she doesn't hurt anymore <clears throat> and my little dog who was abandoned on the roadside to die on Christmas morning has found his forever home You need to get out there and enjoy your forever home while you still can. Go get that rat like that. <sighs> Bye, guys. Life. 
Jesus Christ. 